There is a technique in stage magic called misdirection. The magician waves a bright red silk handkerchief with his right hand. He makes big, sweeping gestures. He demands your attention. And while you're staring at the red silk, his left hand is sliding the coin into his pocket. For the last month, the entire astronomical community has been waving the red silk. They have been screaming about Three Eye Atlas. They have been obsessed with its trajectory, its interstellar origin, its radio signals. And I admit, I fell for it too. I made videos about it. I analysed the data. But yesterday I realised we were all looking at the wrong hand. While we were arguing about a faint invisible dot that is a hundred million miles away, something else walked right through our front door. Something that is brighter, faster and infinitely more terrifying. I am talking about C2025 R2 Swan, the object that the internet is calling the ghost ship. You have seen the viral video, the blurry green footage of an object that looks like it has two engines. The debunkers are telling you it's just a broken rock. They are telling you it's dying. But today I am going to show you why R2 Swan is the true anomaly of 2025. I'm going to show you how it evaded the world's best asteroid warning systems. I am going to show you why it isn't just breaking apart, but effectively multiplying. And I'm going to convince you that while Three Eye Atlas is a mathematical curiosity, R2 Swan is a visceral immediate event that is rewriting the rules of what a comet can look like. Forget the interstellar visitor. It's time to look at the ghost. To understand why Swan is the real story, you have to understand how it was found and more importantly, how it wasn't found. We spend billions of dollars on planetary defence. We have the Atlas Survey, the Pan-Star Survey, the Zwicky Transient Facility. We have automated robot telescopes scanning the sky every single night to catalogue anything that moves. They find rocks that are miles away. They map orbits years in advance. But C2025 R2 Swan? It slipped past all of them. It didn't trigger a single alarm on the deep space networks. Do you know who found it? A man named Vladimir Bazugli, an amateur astronomer sitting at his computer. And he didn't find it looking through a telescope. He found it by hacking the data from a solar satellite. He was looking at images from SOHO, the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory, specifically the SWAN instrument. This is an instrument designed to look for hydrogen Lyman alpha light. It measures the solar wind. It is not, I repeat, it is not designed to find comets. But on September 10th, 2025, Bazzoli noticed a blob on the sensor. A massive glowing hydrogen envelope that shouldn't have been there. Think about what that means. This object was practically on top of the sun, inside the orbit of Earth. And the only reason we saw it is because it was leaking so much gas that it lit up a wind sensor. It was stealthy. It came in from a blind spot moving at incredible speed. And by the time we gave it a name, it was already at perihelion. Three Eye Atlas has been tracked for months. We know its orbit perfectly. It's polite. It follows the rules. Swan is a rogue agent that snuck into the inner solar system before anyone realised it was there. And that brings us to the event of November 3rd. The mainstream narrative is simple. They say comets are fragile. They say R2 Swan got too close to the sun. The heat stressed the nucleus and it fractured. They call it a disintegration event. And technically, yes, the nucleus split. But have you looked at the images from the TTT-3 telescope in the Canary Islands? Usually when a comet breaks, it crumbles. It turns into a cloud of gravel. It fades away instantly because the dust scatters. That is not what is happening here. On November 3rd, the core of Swan didn't just crumble. It split into two distinct high-density fragments. And here is the part that gives me chills. They are maintaining formation. They are travelling side by side, drifting apart at a surprisingly slow, consistent rate. When you look at the processed images, you don't see a debris field. You see two bright headlights, two distinct sources of coma. It looks like a single object that decided to become two. This is why the ghost ship viral video is so compelling. It doesn't look like a natural disaster. It looks like a deployment. Imagine a capsule separating from a booster. The two pieces drift apart, but they are on the same vector, emitting the same exhaust. That is what Swan looks like right now in the constellation of Pisces. While Three Eye Atlas is just a single lonely dot spinning in the dark, Swan is a dual-core spectacle. It is a Gemini event. 
and the visual effect this creates is unlike anything we have seen since Comet Biela in the 19th century. It is a double-headed dragon moving through the zodiac, and yet the media is telling you to look at the other one. Why? Let's take a minute to roast the star of the show, Three Eye Atlas. I'm so tired of hearing about it. I really am. Yes, it's interstellar. Yes, it has high velocity. But if you go out with a backyard telescope tonight and try to find it, do you know what you will see? Nothing. You will see a faint magnitude 10 smudge that looks exactly like every other faint star in the sky. You need a long exposure camera to even prove it's there. The anomalies associated with it, the radio signals, the sideways lines, they are fascinating, sure, on paper. They are data points for scientists to argue about in conference rooms. They are lines on a graph. It is a cerebral mystery. It requires you to trust the math, to trust the radio telescope data, to trust the interpretations of people like Avi Loeb. It is an abstract threat. But R2 Swan is visceral. You can almost see it with binoculars. It is green. It is bright. It has a tail that spans degrees of the sky. And now, with the split nucleus, it has a structure that looks physically impossible to the human eye. We are hardwired to recognise symmetry. In nature, comets are messy blobs. Swan is currently displaying a bilateral symmetry. Two eyes, two tails, two jets. It triggers that part of your brain that recognises face or craft. If 3 Eye Atlas is a radio transmission that you have to decode, R2 Swan is a billboard with neon lights flashing in your face. And yet, the algorithm pushes Atlas. The NASA press releases talk about Atlas. They are boring you to death with the interstellar rock so you don't ask questions about the local object that is currently undergoing a radical metamorphosis. Let's talk about the activity level. This is the smoking gun for why Swan is the more significant event. Three Eye Atlas is dry. It's cooked. It's been travelling between stars for billions of years. R2 Swan is fresh. It came from the Oort cloud. This is its first time in the inner solar system in millions of years, maybe ever. It is volatile. It was discovered by the Swan instrument because it was pumping out insane amounts of hydrogen. It is reacting violently to our sun. Since the split on November 3rd, the brightness hasn't dropped off as fast as predicted. Why? Because now you have two surface areas exposed to the vacuum. You have two engines running. The combined surface area of the two fragments is sublimating ice at a rate that is creating a massive glowing coma. This is what creates the ghost effect. The gas clouds from the two fragments are overlapping, creating interference patterns in the tail. It looks like the wake of a large ship. There are striations. There are waves in the plasma. This is fluid dynamics on a cosmic scale. We are watching a live experiment in how a binary object interacts with the solar wind. It is alive. It is screaming. And we are just watching it tear itself apart or build itself up live on camera. History repeats itself. In 1846, Astronomers were watching Comet Biela. It was a standard comet. And then, right before their eyes, it split. It became two comets. They travelled together for weeks, side by side, connected by a bridge of light. It terrified the Victorian world. People thought it was a sign of the apocalypse. Six years later, the two comets returned, still side by side. And then, they vanished. They never returned. They manifested as a massive meteor storm years later, the Andromedids. R2 Swan is the Baela of our generation, but we have better cameras. We have 4K sensors. We can see the bridge of light connecting the two cores. We can see the material transferring between them. Some astronomers are suggesting that the secondary nucleus is actually disintegration, a temporary cloud of rubble, but others aren't so sure. The secondary nucleus has held its brightness for weeks. Rubble usually fades. A solid chunk of ice stays bright. If Swan has successfully birthed a companion, we are watching orbital mechanics in real time. We are watching the creation of a binary system. Or if you want to put your tinfoil hat on, we are watching a separation stage. Think about it. If you were a probe and you needed to scan the solar system, wouldn't it be more efficient to split into two sensors to create a baseline for interferometry? Two eyes are better than one. I'm not saying it's aliens. But I am saying that if it were a probe, this is exactly what it would look like. I want you to go look at the latest images from the amateur community. Look at the images from yesterday. Don't look at NASA's press releases. Go to Twitter. Go to Astrobin. Look for C2025R2. You will see something that looks like a TIE fighter from Star Wars. You will see a central bar of light with two bright lobes. It is eerie. It looks technological. It is nature. Yes, 
but it is nature performing a high-wire act that is incredibly rare. Contrast that with the images of Three-Eye Atlas, a fuzzy dot, a pixelated mess. The difference is night and day. One requires an explanation of negative polarization and non-gravitational acceleration to be interesting. The other just requires eyes. Swan demands to be seen. It is putting on a display that feels performative, and that is why it is the viral sensation. The human instinct knows when something is significant. We are drawn to the swan videos not because of an algorithm, but because our lizard brains see that shape in the sky, that double-headed shape, and we recognise power. We recognise an event. Is it a coincidence? That is the final question we have to ask. Is it a coincidence that we have the most significant interstellar object in history, Atlas, and the most significant cometary fragmentation event in decades, Swan, happening at the exact same time, in the same month, in the same sky? November 2025 will be remembered as the month the sky got crowded. One visitor from the stars, one visitor from the deep freeze of the Oort cloud. One is stealthy and dark, the other is bright and shattering. It feels like a coordinated arrival. A pincer movement. I know that sounds crazy. I know that orbital dynamics are random. But the odds of these two specific high sigma events overlapping like this are astronomical. And while everyone is debating the radio signals from Atlas, R2 Swan is spreading its debris field across the plane of the solar system. A debris field that Earth might eventually pass through. A debris field that could create a new meteor shower. Swan is leaving a mark. Atlas is just passing through. Swan is leaving pieces of itself behind. It is seeding our orbit. That, to me, is the more lasting legacy. So here is my challenge to you. Stop squinting at the faint dots. Stop waiting for NASA to confirm if the radio signal from Atlas is real. Look at the object that is screaming for attention. Look at C2025R2 Swan. It is beautiful. It is violent. It is currently dying a spectacular death in the constellation of Pisces, splitting its soul in two so that we can see what it's made of. It is the ghost ship of 2025. And unlike the interstellar visitor, this one belongs to us. It came from our backyard, and it is putting on the fireworks display of the century. My name is Mikhail. I'll be tracking the separation of the swan nuclei every night until they fade into the dark. Don't let the red silk distract you. Watch the hand that's holding the knife. Watch Swan. Subscribe, share, and keep your eyes open because the ghost is real.